It is my pleasure now to introduce Paul Polman, CEO of Unilever. Paul, a true champion. He doesn't need much introduction. Paul, thank you. Thanks, Georg, and obviously, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, distinguished guests, friends. The first thing I want to do is congratulate the uh, Global Compact with its 15 years, and it would not be possible without Georg. So, an applause for Georg. So, as we've as we've heard this morning, the momentum for action is definitely building. It's often driven by the signals of the marketplace. Those are the strongest signals to drive actions. But also citizens are demanding change. They're demanding a more sustainable and more inclusive business, and these business models are emerging. The UN Global Compact, with over 8,000 member companies, is pioneering this new blueprint of what business should look like in the 21st century. Likewise, other organizations, like the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, many companies are included in both of those. Over a thousand people, over a thousand companies, signed actually the World Bank statement calling for a price on carbon here in September last year. 4,000 now report actually specifically on their CO2 emissions. Low carbon technology partnerships are poised to deliver real solutions to the climate change challenges. Now, who could have imag imagined that just a few years ago? The signals are definitely there. And yet, with so many of us engaged, and you are all wonderful examples of that, we all know that we still have so much more to do. We're making incremental progress when we actually need the transformative changes. We're actually still too much guided just by, taking, by managing the risk or the minimal requirements. When we need to be guided more and more by the enormous opportunities and the morality of what we're trying to address. We are doing what we can, but we're not yet doing what we must. And all this at a time, ladies and gentlemen, when we're actually running out of time. Every day that we continue to abide poverty, thousands of children under the age of five will die. And with them, their dreams and our dignity. Every day, that we continue to treat the atmosphere as an open sewer, we're irretrievably pushing the boundaries of our planet beyond its limits. And every day that business as usual continues, we delay the opportunity that we know awaits us in this new climate economy. It is not anymore about doing less harm. It is about moving to positive contributions. That is what makes 2015 a pivotal year. You've heard that the Finance for Development Conference, the post-2015 summit in September, or the COP21 in December. Not a coincidence that they're all in the same year. 2015, indeed, could be the year when the world sets the pathway for a different kind of future. But getting those deals in place is obviously not the end goal. It's much bigger than that. And we can't leave it all to the politicians. So it also falls to business, not just to lead by, by example, not just doing it internally by putting your own house in order, but more importantly, also leading externally, creating these transformative changes. Some describe the next decade as the breakthrough decade, a short window of opportunity to change how we live on this planet. In fact, it defines much more. It defines how many people will live or die. By 2030, the world population will have passed 8 billion people. Without decisive action to tackle climate change, some estimate that in that time, more than 100 million innocent people will perish. And the global economy actually will grow significantly less. About 3.2% is the estimate. All directly or indirectly related to the results of our carbon-intensive business models or development models. You might have seen this week's publication in the Landsat Commission on Health and Climate. It talks about the impact on the current development trajectory, especially on the poor, and they're becoming clearer. 
But I think we all agree that it doesn't need to be that way. Depending on how you look at it, this presents either huge challenges or enormous opportunities. If business is to take advantage of these opportunities, companies need to move beyond change as usual to change as unusual. We need to be disruptive, taking risks and challenging the status quo. We need to be bold, looking at new technologies and creative means of financing. And we need to be inclusive, building new multi-sector coalitions that aggregate efforts and harness the energy of the young, many of them in this room, energies to fight for this cause. But ultimately, we need systems change, the very nature of capitalism, what it means to be a consumer, what it means to be a citizen. And to achieve this change, we must work in, co in coalitions. Business can certainly not stay on the sidelines of a system that gives them life in the first place. This is everybody's agenda. I had the privilege to serve on the Secretary General's high-level panel. Many stakeholders contributed to the global outreach, whether through the UN Global Compact, the World Business Council, or citizens' outreach such as My World or the World We Want campaign. We all made our intentions clear. And now it's time that we focus on honoring them. This is not something we delegate. Employees can change their companies. And through their companies, they can change the world. We want to be judged by future generations of not what we say, but what we actually do. I'm an optimist. I believe that the future belongs to optimists. As leaders, we can leverage the positive energy and offer solutions. If we succeed, and I believe we must, we can lay the foundations for ending poverty and building a sustainable future for generations. I can't think of a bigger task. This is our moment to change, obviously, the course. And yes, it always seems impossible until it's done. Put purpose times commitment plus accountability. And I can assure you that it's bigger than resistance. Thank you very much.